it's an interesting place to where to start. So I, I I know that your background is in helping organisations uh, in recent years anyway, in helping organisations to do a better job of the kind of things that I would classify as software engineering and um, you know advising them uh, on that in the broad because this is a multifaceted, multi-dimensional thing, um, particularly with team topologies. Um, you know, this is really talking at the level of CEOs and CTOs rather than, you mm -hmm. know, individual developers on the ground very much. This is strategic. This is the stuff that we need to get right in order to put organizations in a, in, in a, a position to do a better job. It's a tool that we can use. So if we're working at that kind of scale and thinking in those sorts of terms, where do we start? What are the things that we need to get right? That's a great question. And and just as a, as an aside, you're right. The 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 kind of conversations that we have with uh, with customers and, and and potential customers are have increasingly switched to it's the CEO, the CEO of the company. At least it's the CTO if it's a larger company or CTO of a division if it's a huge company. But yeah, I mean, we get CTOs who've read the book and go. I want some of this. Thank you very much, and and and, and approaches. So it, it's been. Um, I'm so Manuel and I, my, so my co-author Manuel Paish and I are, are super grateful, really, for all of the hard work that the the publishers, IT Revolution, put <clears throat> into getting the book into a really really good shape at the right time. Uh, because without without their help, it it it, it wouldn't have wouldn't have landed uh, as well as it obviously has done. But we're really happy that it's, it's helping lots of organisations to rethink how they approach. Uh, software engineering and and and, and the, the the building and running of software enriched services as we call them now because often we're building services which have a software part to them but it's not entirely software for example applying for a passport somebody has might have to go into might have to go online yes but they might have to go into a passport office sometimes if if they're if they're in a particular uh, category or whatever they might there might be a part of this service which is which is which is physical and then eventually you get your passport through the door delivered to you so there's that physical part as well and there's a software bit in the middle so we tend to talk about now software enriched services where software is doing some kind of enrichment of, of something else that's happening um but yeah certainly ceos are, are seeing the team to properties patterns as, as part of the part of the approach part of the mindset that they that they want to adopt to be successful and that that's been that's been really great to see. I think what um, I think what what the what the adoption of Teen to Pod or, or, or what, what the success of, of this kind of Teen to Pod's book uh, um, and, and and ideas indicates is a recognition that this job, this activity of software engineering or building these software and rich systems is not just writing code it's not just it's not just about heads down typing some stuff out and then putting that software out the door there's a kind of an ecosystem of things that are involved around that we know from the book acts uh, well from, we know from research from google uh, and other people that psychological safety is, is absolutely crucial to, to make this stuff happen at scale and at pace if we we're going, if we're doing small scale, really slowly, maybe you don't need so much psychological safety because there isn't so much that can go wrong. If we're going potentially large scale or at least very quickly, multiple changes a day, which obviously we can do thanks to things like continuous delivery. We know how to do that stuff, right? This is CD is absolutely foundational for any of this stuff to happen. Um, so we've got the patterns for, for going quickly, safely and repeatedly. If we're doing this, there's a bunch of these other things that come into play. It's the team interactions that we talk about in, in team topologies. It's clarity of kind of team purpose, but there's all the stuff around kind of domain-driven design, like clarity of business purpose and business mission and finding a, sort of de-untangling these different concepts. The psychological safety I've just mentioned. But how do we get learning across these different teams? If these teams are now somewhat separate and decoupled, how do we make sure we're spreading awareness and learning across these teams? Um, there's a whole set of social practices or, or, or semi-technical practices, maybe things like writing, um, writing uh, kind of 
um, doing some kind of technical writing. That like could be an article, it could be a blog post, it could be some technical documentation. That is absolutely, that's the, a key part of success to enable people to self-serve from what we call a platform, Teams Bodies platform. That, that, that the, the quality of the documentation there needs, needs to be first class and so on and so on. And it's this ensemble of, of different kinds of practices, different kinds of things that need to come together to make software delivery at scale and at pace actually viable and sustainable in the long term. We need to have a, a solid foundation of technical practices, but that is not enough. It, it, we need to combine that and mix it in with a bunch of other things too. Um, and I think that's, for me, that's super interesting. Like I like to, I, I, I like, I've been involved in a lot of this stuff for, for, for many, many years and I, I like to be involved in it. I, I like the, I like thinking about the relationships between practices, I think. I've just realized that. I think that's that's one of the things that I actually, I, I like is think, like thinking about the relationship between continuous delivery and teams bodies, for example. And I actually wrote an article last year or early this year, I think uh, about exactly that, but thinking it through going, oh yeah, how does that relate to that? This kind of thinking through how these different practices relate and, and, and in what context they can work or might not work, or, or you might need more of one or, or, or less of one or something like that. And that's that's obviously because I like doing it. That's what I, that's what I've uh, that's what I've helped to build in in in, in my company, Conflux, and and what we're helping our customers with. It, for me, it's a super interesting space because it's a, it's a, about kind of it starts to explore sort of complexity, complex systems, complex adaptive systems in a kind of in sense um, where you've got multiple agents interacting, and therefore the 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 the, the the behavior of the system is, is non-predictable or, or rather is, is non-linear and has, has, has uh, apparently kind of unexpected outcomes and so on. Um, and let, let, I, I'd like to try and put some words into your mouth and see if I yeah. see if I'm, I'm understanding. I, I'm sure, I'm sure that we are well aligned on this, but I, I think that what you're saying is exactly right. So the way that I, uh, the way that I've kind of approached the, <clears throat> the kind of holistic nature realistically of, good software development mm. um, that you're talking about is in my consultancy, I talk to clients about, you know, you've got to be excellent at the tech. You've got to be excellent at the, the culture and you've got to be excellent at kind of, you know, the organizational um, design for, for want of a better term. And uh, these pieces don't work. You, you, being good at any one of them is not good enough. You, you, you've got to be good at all of them to do certainly great work. And optimizing any, in any one place is not going to fix the problem. So you've got to figure out ways of, of doing that. And I think, w would you agree that that's that's the kind of thing that you're talking about? Yes. Yeah. No, I would. And um, I think there's a thing beyond that as well, which is um, uh, is understanding. It is it, it's uh, it's that high level of understanding about what we're doing and why. So is that shuhari? That's the re bit, or it's, at least it's the ha bit of shuhari. Um, so we understand what we're doing and why, and understand how these practices relate. So we know that actually, hey, if we're in theory, the, in theory, this is like ideal practice over here, and there's some other practice over here. But actually, we find ourselves in a, in, in a, a novel situation where actually we need to change our practice in one area because actually we've found uh, a challenge that means that we, we need to adapt but we're happy yeah. to adapt precisely because we understand the underlying principles and 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 i mean this is kind of the same in any kind of non-trivial kind of operating context but um it really does start to have a massive difference <laughs>